Right then. Let's do a little recap, huh? Um, this is officially my first Monday. Like, I don't... This has been for years that the first week is kind of like a warm-up week. I don't really trade that much. And if I don't feel like trading, I don't trade. But obviously, this is now the first week after the NFP of uh, January. So now we are fully in. I think, um, so this is where today the London Open, right? And straight away, um, Dave was asking a question the, uh, earlier. It was a really interesting question, like, when do you know and how to trade it? And when, when do you actually trade the low bot? And when do you not trade it? It's a good question. And the answer is always very simple. You know, that same technique where we, on the hourly, we want to see what the market is doing. So suppose if I was here at... 15 minutes before London open. I know that the price is below the box. So obviously this box low would be of interest to me. And then all the levels to the left over here will be interested, uh, will be something of interest to me. And then obviously the daily box high, which is this, that's interesting because price usually bounces off it and there you go it bounced off it plus at the same time if you look at the pattern of the purple uh, sorry the purple the hourly we can see a three up and a four down and look ABC where price has actually bounced against the purple so even if you didn't have the knowledge of the box high which is actually this level you would not have uh, you, you would have seen the purple and you know the bounce of the purple is a real thing it happens quite a lot of the time anyway so that's one thing and if you go to the m5 chart so basically it depends on your preparation so before you start trading the london open at the first you know for lobot if you've done this prep work like what we did on the hourly chart and then you come down and see some levels on the five minute chart so obviously on the five minute chart you're going to look at the frankfurt open you're going to look at uh, pre-market and overnight so in this case overnight range has already been cleared so we don't have to worry about that unless price starts to go up so as long as price keeps going down so uh, at Frankfurt open we've seen that price actually did go down but it got rejected so this then becomes our intraday or session uh, level which becomes important so I'll mark that and then because I'm looking at it at London Open, obviously, I'm going to look to the left and see what's happening. So if I go to the M1 now, uh, this is my London Open. And this is my Frankfurt high, the Frankfurt session, the pre-market high. So this is this became my pre-market low. So even if I don't have that line, it's already my pre-market low. So these lines are now there. That's it. This is where I'm going to trade in between them. So whether I'm going to take the low bot or not, straight away it's here. That's the first candle. And I already see that market is stuck. And I have these two clear levels. And these are not the levels that I just have drawn now. I, I mean, when I was trading them, I already saw them. So even if you don't, if you didn't have those uh, levels, you still have this structure, the boxes that are there to guide you. So you have this level, this level, and this level. So as soon as the market breaks or market opens, you want a clear breakout. And in this case, I wanted the breakout to be, you know, all the way there. But because the overall was kind of bearish, you see from, from this point of view, I thought, well, the, the, the strong, you know, the up move is probably not going to last but that's not how you should be trading i mean the idea should be okay these are the levels let's see what the market does and what it did was that it did not break out so the first candle failed it didn't break out and then the second candle just confirmed that fake out uh, as you can see it's, it just became a bearish candle you know as if to tell me that it's a 
you know, it, it was a, a fruit candle, a bearish. Then you can go down and then it goes down. So people would normally think in this way. They would, a beginner trader would say, okay, it didn't go up. Not a beginner, actually. Uh, a kind of uh, semi-advanced trader. Would look there. Okay, I'm not trading long, but there's a strong move down. And they will immediately start looking for shorts. But again, uh, there's a range low here as well. And then we have the next level. So when price came down, we needed it to clear this, which it didn't. Because if this closed below this level, then we'd be looking for a pullback. And then we would see what price does at this level. Um, so it went up, down. By this time, I had decided I'm not trading. So the low bot is only for the first 15 minutes, that particular low bot strategy. And then after the 15 minutes, it's purely uh, in the case of whether the market will break out and then whether it will pull back and what are the levels. So that same mindset, it's similar to exactly low bot, but low bot is timely. It's at London open straight away. And after that, it becomes random. So you just wait and see. So it wasn't long uh, after we saw this. So what didn't happen here, happened here. So if you had this thought process paused and you were not distracted by other things, you saw this, you had these levels, you saw the market. Now you know that the low bot, you know that straying, that straight breakout that happens at the London Open, it hasn't happened. But if the market moves, we could still do something about it because we have these levels. Failed here, failed here, comes to it again, confirms your hypothesis that these levels were strong, stays within those levels, couldn't go up, market is overall bearish, breaks out strong, breaks out strong on this candle, confirming all of your hypothesis, and, and closes outside this. Let me mark this as well. Gives you a, a first waltz pattern entry. I did not take it. I was still skeptical because of this wick. I waited for this price to break out. Then we had this level. But I took a, an executive decision thinking, okay, it has paused. It hasn't gone up. It might go through it because this is not really a major level. This is just Frankfurt open. And it was a risk. We took this and it went down. And then we had a clear level over here, which was this daily. Uh, so the 13.905 plus the other thing was that it was a... Um, a BRN as well. So 13,905 was the daily uh, box high. And even if you didn't know, obviously when the market does something like this, like one, two, three, four, and it's been moving like that, you would trail candles. So that was a pretty good uh, 20 people on that one. So did you trade this, um, Alina, over here? This would have been a nice setup on the 12 second chart. Yeah. Did you did you catch this, Doug? No, no, I wasn't. I was out. I saw it when I came back. Oh, okay. So, Alina, did you take this, or you didn't take this on the twelve second chart? I think um, Dave took it. I don't think I got that. I got. Well, was it? Uh, you didn't like it or you did not see it? I was in at 10.25 till 10.29. Oh, no, I did get it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you got this one. Yeah, I got a bit of it. I didn't get the full length of it. I know why. But yeah, because like there was this little pause. You probably got in somewhere here. Because I, I can see Dave got in here, but because it paused with this candle, 
on the 12 second chart both you and Sam uh, both Dave and Sam kind of got small wins from this because it paused here and I bought that yeah. position off them <laughs> over here because as they got out I got in here um, yeah ideally we should have taken both this and this because that's the first pause or pullback and that's the second pullback so you should have taken both of them and this should be it I mean if you if you catch this and this yep. your job's done this, I think both was only something I could see with hindsight yeah at the moment that's that's the target I wouldn't have taken that in a way because it didn't pull back quite enough for me I like to see it hit the blue line blue MA it didn't on the S12 blue yeah, the, you know, on the gator, I like it to, the, the green, the red, and the blue to mix, and it didn't do it. It was a little bit too gentle. Oh, um, I see what you mean. Well, for the, this, this actually was a, like a pause entry, the waltz pattern that I talk about, uh, whereas on the 12 second chart, it would be a, a very good pullback. Uh, Dave's chart shows pretty good. Uh, one, two, three, four candle pullback around here. So obviously, um, th there's a nice pullback on the 12 second chart here. He takes that, and then this becomes another setup. Um, I think Sam didn't get it as well. Uh, but yeah, I didn't take it out 12 seconds. This is a pretty good pullback for me. Uh, this is a two candle pullback well, within a breakout. The only problem was there was this level, but I was hoping that it would um, or expecting for it to actually continue and hit that level. And it did that, reacted very strongly to it, came back to those levels. Um, half heartedly, I went into this. I thought this pullback wasn't good. You know, it's too sharp, and that's exactly what it did. Uh, it beat trapped us, but that was fine. I, I played it well because I had these levels in mind, right? The Frankfurt session low. It's not just a Frankfurt session low. Uh, it's also um, like the first candle of the Frankfurt open, the pre-market. So I thought they, it's a pivot point where buyers and sellers would have this, you know, diverging orders. And that's exactly what interaction was happening over here. And I was watching it. I had my stop loss up there. And I was watching this level. If had the market closed above these, these level and closed above somewhere here, I would have gotten out. So I got in, took a minus four, and then realized these levels. So I went back in and I added quite a few times. I even, I even held through this because when it came back, I thought, okay, we'll test it again. It did test it. And then it came down. I took some profits and thought, I don't like these kind of markets. I, I'm not. I'm not for these charts. I want moves like this. If I get in, I want bang, like this. It didn't do it, so I got out. And then it went straight up. And that's it. I got my eyes off the chart after this. But obviously, you guys had it, <laughs> eyes on it. So that's the move up. Now, I'm not interested in these moves because of all of this. So whatever happens on the right of this stuff, it doesn't interest me. I would want the market to actually break that level or break this level. Only then I will look at it. So that's a really quick recap for the London session. And my buddy has sent an RSVP. So I'm going to do my stock analysis alone. This guy gets a lot of headaches. Twice a week I get a message from him, I've got a headache. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sam. Frank D is here. Hello, Frank. Good to have you with us again. So we haven't seen a setup one on the M1 today. Obviously, setup one only happens when it moves. 
Um, okay, let's let's go to some bitcoins. Here we go. Right. Somebody was asking me uh, if the setup, the AIM setup, or the AIM system uh, generated any signals for the Bitcoin. And, well, uh, it did. When I was talking about it throughout the year, um, it wasn't really a massive thing for everyone. Everyone was scared. Uh, but if you look at it, there were two signals from last year. One of them has generated its first exit signal. So today, <laughs> it would have exited. So that's that's the first entry. Before this, I mean, all the way from, uh, I think we had a short signal in 2018. And then after that, there was a short here, which failed. And then the thing switched. So we have a setup two long on this here, somewhere in May 2019. That was a pretty good trade. Another setup too. You know, that craziness of 2019 that happened. It went up 13,000, came down. There was another setup here, but break even. And then after that, it just went sideways, sideways, and then a few spikes, but never set up until this. This was a beautiful setup one. I took this, I think, up to 12,000. No, actually, 11,000, yeah. So we bought this at 9,000. 500 or something and sold it there two or three days straight but after that it was this so it's almost a setup zero but it's a continuation pattern pretty good setup so if you didn't take this here then you take it like Doug <laughs> setup two over there and after that there's no stopping so obviously if you took it here or here uh, which we did I think we we went in around 11,000 and happily sold it at 16,000 yeah this was your first exit signal for this the most aggressive exit signal which is 26th of November and then it goes kind of sideways and creates another setup too I did not take this because the box was too big and I wasn't sure what would it would it do around to, to uh, 20,000 that turned out to be a mistake, uh, but it gave us another chance here, another pause, and then it goes up. And now my bet is short, all the way from 41, 40, 39, and this trade for me is actually done. I've taken most of the profits as a fruit trade from there. My target was around 30. Uh, and some was around 32 as well. I was actually uh, just going for 34 only. I thought 34 is going to be the next target. But as you can see, it's hit the green line. And now uh, the market is taking that as an opportunity to buy. There's quite a lot of bullishness still. As you can see, the market's bounced back to 35. So that means there are buyers sitting here waiting for market to actually come down a bit so they can buy again and, and it's going. But I think that uh, it is bound to go sideways into this range, you know, and if it does that, that will be another opportunity then to buy it at some later stage. So we'll see what happens there. Do you guys have anything else on your mind? Anyone? No, not me, no. no. Righty. Look at US 30. No. Mm -hmm. Was that a no? Yeah, no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone of you interested in trading stocks? Is anyone going to do that? Yeah, yeah, I would be if I can get the leverage. 
Yeah, you got the leverage. IG. IG. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can you actually look at an Australian stock? That's BLD. On ASX, Burrell, the second one. Second one. Right. Yeah, interesting. So that came up on my, it's been on my scanner for a little bit. But I was just wondering because the weekly charts only just popped over the purple line. But it is kind of doing a gentle rise. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, so the weekly has recovered from the pandemic, but now it's. Let's do the analysis. So that's that's the the areas that we are stuck with. So basically, it is a one, two, three, and there's a failed breakout here as well. So that's one problem here. We don't want the five minute chart, we want daily. Um, and we see a B trap on it as well. So it's failed once. It's moved a lot. It's still traveling a fair way above the purple line slope and on the daily chart. So it's kind of it is a setup one, but on the weekly, if you look at the uh, the pattern, it's yeah. it's quite possible that the weekly itself is ready for a wave four, or which means a pause, which was yeah. not the case yeah. here. Now over here, you'd be thinking the weekly chart is not really trending up. But the setup one was really pretty around here on the weekly chart. Uh, but now you are you're you're asking for a really strong continuation of the past. So if one were to take this trade, we would have to take it here. And yeah, but it has to clear those levels. So there are loads of other stocks. So we would say, why don't we find a stock? which is actually already moving, you know, in an, uh, a trend up, something like. Yeah, that makes sense. Because um, the reason I'm trading stocks is because I can be very choosy, if you know what I mean. I have, mm. like there are thousands of them. And I don't need thousands, but if, they, if, if there was even a thousand, just a thousand to search from, it would be better than waiting for a setup on a one chart, right? So why not find stocks that are either like this or, you know, like even in this example, um, you have the weekly chart that has clear levels to the left, not the best chart. Let me go to a few more examples. So these uh, lower price ones, they usually come out of nowhere. They're like, you know, they're dead going sideways and then all, the, all of a sudden they come out. Uh, but the reputable stocks, you know, small cap or medium cap, those are the ones that are usually have clear trends. So for example, Twitter here, I know TWI, Titan, um, see, they never had problems. Now, I'm giving you an example of American ones, but I meaning the thing is the same. So we want, why not that's find not. something that's actually already trending? I can run, uh, set up one on the, okay, so here we go. We have, uh, 50. I just run the scan for you and I will set my ASX because I've already had these. You see this PM8, remember? This had hit my scan yeah, somewhere in November. It was a beautiful one, beautiful one. Yeah. Specifically because even if you wanted to buy the real stock, it wasn't really difficult to buy one. You know, for a thousand you could have got yourself, or twelve hundred dollars, you could have got yourself <laughs> twelve hundred stocks. <laughs> 
So the other one I was looking at was NEC, which is in your list as well. It, yeah, it must, be, it must be. It must be. Lower down below QUB. Keep going down. Um, up a bit. Up. Let me just oh, no. do it on. Hold on. Ascending, descending. It's better. QUB. It's two above. It's no NEC. NEC. Up one more. What's happening? Above oh, OZL. Yeah, my eyes. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, so this, this is nice. The only problem is that you know extended wave three, very extended. Yeah. So you know opportunities were here and here on this stock, uh, but it's still you know if the fundamental. It's also close to its all-time high, and this is a this is a television network. Uh huh. So it makes me go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it has come back to its previous highs, and that's where people have taken profits. So if it was to yeah. go past that, you know, who knows? It it can. Yeah. I've no, I, I haven't checked the Australian um, uh, list for a while, so let me just check it, and maybe we'll just maintain are these the ones that are available to you on your CFD or IG? Like Australian stocks are available to you to trade on CFD or something? Um, I'm actually just buying the stock. Um, oh, the real thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can do these I've uh, only, penny I've stocks. Only, I've only bought one. Mm -hmm. So the stock I'm in at the moment is um, MYQ, which is what um, Sam's in as well. MYQ. Oh, I've got to go, guys. Uh, thanks, Amy. We'll catch you later. All right. See you, Doug. Oh, that's a nice one. Not bad at all. So I'm guessing you bought it at one dollar or something. I didn't get in that early. I got in about one seventeen because I had some footage. One seventeen. So somewhere there. So yep. you had to sit like through some. Drawing. So I was going. Yeah. I was going ab above that. Um, not the the second level up on the left going above that so and then I had a bit of slippage on that day see the thing with, but that's with, okay. with this is these these type of setups where you have the weekly shot you know go parabolic like this and then market turns around comes back to the green line is that you only have your high probability trade is between here to the box high yeah so and that's where I'm looking to get out oh just make it on the decision either either you get out there and see how it goes like if it goes and crashes through it and obviously you just don't do anything i think um yeah my strategy for stocks would be exactly like uh, it is this i'm going to go in here and then i'm going to add in here i possibly will add back add here as well if this one is kind yeah. of in profit now and then i would probably uh, uh take at least one of these position off when price goes there and then I'll see what happens around that and I'll be just trailing boxes I do intend to let it run uh, as long as possible so that's what we're gonna do and we should be doing that on the only thing that we don't do on the M1 chart like that is because M1 chart is very spiky and you know spread takes a lot of it and so we trade differently otherwise um, yeah. the strategy is quite simple Okay, so NEC, yeah, it's it's a bit extended, but it's a setup one. Uh, one should have an order somewhere here, 240, 241. Market is obviously going down, so you probably don't want to do that now. But let's see what it does. Um, I do not intend to set pending orders. Uh, I want to be, you know, at the U.S. session when I'm there, and I want to just make my entry straight away and then I don't want to look at it again right so this one was on my scanner as well it's um, <laughs> I've actually not maintained my scanner so I'll just quickly look at this watch list so this is obviously gone now uh, I can't really trade the Australian stocks I can tr trade them why not IG gives me option for everything I can I can trade the whole world um, I think 
I think the US stocks would probably give you a much better yes, process. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. For me, trading US stocks is the wrong time in the world for me. So. Pending orders are still available. Right. Like, So with pending orders, uh, you don't want to trade uh, the penny stocks. Um, you want, if you want to trade US stocks, uh, make sure your scanner is five plus. I would even say ten plus. Okay. Ten above, between ten and twenty. Uh, if you want to buy real stocks, obviously, then okay. If it's, uh, you can even try five. See how it goes. But the thing with uh, these stocks is the five and. Uh, under under ten dollars is that they can have these very huge, um, you know, gaps, and that's why they are favorites for day traders because they do have those gaps. So um, for us, we want to like trade. I, although I have, you know, set up my scanner between one point five and stuff, but the idea there is that I will not set pending orders for those. I will look at the pre-market when the US opens and for example if my uh, if, uh, let me just go to one of the examples I think this probably um, I think it happened on Tesla as well let me just go to that <laughs> oh look at that 884 huh so you know when the signal was here in there when, are you still in Tesla uh, we still have uh, 10 stocks uh, not 10 I think yeah um, the real stocks we only 10 so but they were the average price is 444 so they have doubled uh, so not many, but this is where we originally got entered on the 444 here. But obviously, if I had the pending order, the pending order actually was 420. And I really had a laugh at this because, you know, uh, Elon Musk, he, he did a joke about this. Uh, he, he gave a lot of these ref 420 references in his Twitter thing. And then he went on with Joe Rogan and I had a, you know, a drag as well. Uh, so... And when I was buying, the <laughs> price was 420. <laughs> so I remember that. But when the market opened, it actually opened all the way up there. Right? So I waited for it to come down and then we made our entry at 444. And then waited for it. Uh, obviously with th this one uh, on this account, just the, the simulation, I was already long from these areas and then added on multiple times with this and all that. But the other one with, the, I think the only trade that I have with um, um, Interactive Brokers account, is just this one left and once I get out of Tesla, I will, I'm not gonna go to that account again. Cause I'm gonna be putting, I'm not gonna be buying the real stock. I'll be just, um, it, this brings a lot of complication in accounting, you know, because it's yeah. wealth and capital building and all that stuff. And then the accountant was saying that, oh, that's going to be extra charge and blah, 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 and all different calculations and all. Anyway. Um, it's not ideal for me either. It's just I, had, I didn't have another account set up that I could use. So I just plugged in and grabbed some stock. It's nice. So, um, yeah, but, you know, the U.S. markets are the U.S. markets. I mean, they are the ones that move. So let's go back to the Australian. Do you have anything else in mind with the Australian market? Uh, not really. I just wanted to ask you oh, particularly about look Bob. Look at this one. Now that, that, this is, this is my favorite setup one. And can you see the difference between this one and the one that you have taken or the one that you were talking about? Yeah, definitely. See that clear price move, right? Plus the pullback is decent. It's not disproportional, right? 
So if you were going to put a standard deviation channel on this, this is going to go s nice smooth up between the two. And because, and because of that, we have this nice clean pullback, uh, tight box. So easily, I think, if you had caught this nice lovely two dollars is where you would have bought it and a nice 33 percent profit by now so most probably got out here at 282 if not at three but i think setting a target at three would be really reasonable um if i were to set my so with that one i noticed on the weekly chart it had a really quite a flat consolidation period as well on the weekly which one the one the other one on that on that chart but on the weekly time frame here we go so it was quite flat consolidation before yes. it broke through that, the that's, line. that's the pattern that's what we want yeah we, especially yeah. with these um, penny stocks you want to see this you want something fundamentally to have changed in that company you know the market has changed um, like the other day Elon Musk um, responding to WhatsApp's change of policy uh, responded, um, oh yeah, WhatsApp policy is not good. They're going to share, uh, you know, a, a messaging app should not be sharing your data like um, as, like a social app like Facebook and Instagram and stuff. But they did that because it they bought it, right, ages ago. And they want that data. So he said, uh, we, we all wanted to leave WhatsApp, like my, my family and friends and all of them. And Elon Musk was saying, why don't you go to Signal? And signal is another app and guess what because the this is this is a, a great example of silly bullish markets um what the market has done that everyone went to signal they found the signal stock oh wow <laughs> and this stock has gone up by a phenomenal uh, ten times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not ten times. Uh, I think something ten like uh, more than a thousand percent because it was zero point zero yeah. three. Oh wow! Uh, and okay. but by the time when, when people are buying it, it was half a dollar, right? And in two days, it went all the way there. Guess what? This does not belong. This is not signal stock. The signal app. Some random something else. Yes, <laughs> this is an over-the-counter. Uh, some <laughs> some company, um, electronic technology. It was some people, you know, some something. Uh, and would, the markets. You would want to yeah, put it at ten dollars then. They would have had the best day of their lives. You know, the directors and stuff. Most probably. There will be a lot of their that, employees and a lot of the directors or high officials and people who would be holding this stock. Their fortunes would have changed. <laughs> they don't stock anymore. They've sold it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I if I was if I own this stock for a dollar or fifty cents, and let's suppose I was invested in this company for other reasons, right? And I had held it since two thousand seventeen. And all of a sudden, I saw this. I'm not going to stay in this. <laughs> Your thousand dollars invested has turned into uh, fifteen thousand. So imagine you had ten thousand in there. All of a sudden, this is like better than Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, um, the, the point I was making was, uh, I think the um, my thought process is that if you if you want to buy a company, which is Penny, something fundamentally should have changed with it. Like, you know, something's changed with this. These are established companies. Looks like it. So this is nice. Oh, this is very I find nice. I it really useful. This is very going nice. through Going through all the stock charts because that they all kind of had a different formation to get to their setup ones. Yeah. So um, it was good to see, you know, the approach of each of the charts and then where they, whether they went or not. Yeah. I think the, um, 
especially in bull markets, what we've seen in the last 10 years. I mean, I, I really regret, I really regret this. I mean, I should have been trading stocks, set up one on the daily. I could have kept my job, <laughs> which I loved. I enjoyed that job, right? And with this, like, and if you have your job going on and then you can take trades like this, right? For example, wow. I mean, you can trade this on weeklies as well. You know, to keep taking these pullbacks. It's so easy. Uh, this is my, this is my I'd regret. Prefer, yeah. I don't think I've got enough patience for weekly. The daily looks are off. I mean, most of the time it's only about not even a month before you see some extreme. And the setup one is not, yeah, setup one is not long term thing. Uh, we only stay in a stock probably a few days, uh, a week, two weeks. Mm, so, yeah. like, for example, this is what we're looking for. Like, for example, if you took this trade, uh, 21st of December, you went and buried yourself under min spice, came back <laughs> on the 7th of January. Oh, yeah. And a bit richer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you come out of, you know, as, as your brain starts to make sense, the effect of alcohol and stuff goes away. You're like, uh -huh, let's check my charts. And you're like, oh, this one's doubled. Okay, I'll take my profit. <laughs> Bonus. Yeah. Christmas presents paid for. <laughs> it's fascinating. There's so many. I mean, whenever a stock goes up. Oh, wow. Lovely setup. Okay, let's see. What's the weekly chart? Ah, see, beautiful setup on the M1, on the M1, on the daily. This is another thing that I love about the daily and the weekly because it's M1, M5 you know exactly the same kind the five times thing right so this is your m1 yeah. this is your m5 uh so yeah the m5 here which is the weekly chart is it has a few problems uh well not problem problems but i mean the first at first glance we just look at patterns right now the fact that i don't see the whole the chart now this must be something with this the company Version money. The thing that, ah. Yeah. Okay. The thing with that chart was the daily kind of seemed to jump around a bit. So I didn't. With this one? Like each of the bar. Yeah. yeah. Like the, there's lots of gaps. Yeah, lots of gaps of, and stuff. Yeah, that made me feel a bit uncomfortable. Good, bad, not sure. I didn't like it. Yeah, forget gappy charts. That's the thing with stocks. Uh, we have quite a lot of opportunities and we have quite a lot of choice. Okay, we don't, we haven't taken this, so not a problem. Find something else. We can delete this one. Let me just uh, tidy up my my list. Um, if we don't like it, we'll delete that. Delete this one as well. Uh, it looks rubbish. This one's gone. See, even with a weekly uh, on a daily chart, if you just zoom out, you know what's going on. Something to. This is something to envy. Just look at it. Okay, that's nice. O Z L, but it's gone now. Uh, What's the story with it? Oh, minerals. Okay, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> That's Australian economy there. Oh, look at these beautiful setups on this one. This one's moved quite similar to, you know, the, the world indices. Ah, Harvey Norman. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's one of our bigger retailers. So. Yeah, they're very much in line with as if you're looking at a US 500 chart or something like that. Exactly. They've done well out of being locked. So, uh, you know, portions of a 
of Australia, particularly Victoria, were locked down for longer than, you know, July to August. So they've done quite well out of delivering things. To you see, what's happening in the pandemic is that, um, especially in US and Europe and stuff, the corporates are making double money. So they are taking money from us, the people who've lost their jobs, and the government is paying us, and the government is also paying the corporates because they're paying their employees. And then that money eventually goes back into the corporate world. So they are the fundamental winners. In the US, the, the top 100 uh, guys have collectively made about 700 billion last year. Yeah, not surprising. They like capitalism, we like capitalism, but it seems to be designed for the super rich now. Okay, that's the Australian stock. Let me just go to our normal list. I'll quickly go through it. Mm, not a really pretty chart. Actually, this shouldn't be there. Delete that. Don't like it. I probably liked it the other day, but not anymore. This now, what I'm, uh, uh, I've just about, you know, Joe, what I've just started. This is my serious investment portfolio I'm looking at. Uh, not the portfolio itself, but the stocks for it. So TradingView is my charting software and IG is my trading platform. Obviously, this is just, I take everything on this account. Um, not interested. But I didn't delete the pending order, so that's silly. What was it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Next one, next one, next one, next one. Oh, check this out. See, I, I, I like to do entries like this as well. I've taken the entry 23rd of December, somewhere in the middle of setup on forming, but then setup on actually formed here. Ideally, I should have waited for it. So as soon as this candle kind of closes, at the open of the next day, you go long, that's 5.22, and three days later, you're already in profit. Really, really good setup. One can bring stop loss to that level or take profits. Actually, we've taken profits already, a thousand. So, TWI, yeah, that's one of my trades that I've taken. Delete this one. This is really nice as well. Um, finance company. The finance sector actually started to go up towards the end of last year and start of this year because people are now seeing that they will be back to making money. Okay, nice, lovely pullback on the weekly chart, um, but not a good setup on the daily chart. This is again a really, so this is another one, uh, Alina, uh, where you have a, a reversal kind of position going on. So this is not a breakout of something, but this is actually, you know, we can see that um, it re a, a pandemic, it lost its value created a, a B trap and which turned this into a wave one now. So that's your one and two. And this now is your possibly your wave three. And if this is your wave three, then this trade here, the setup one is actually indicating that you're possibly going into a wave five of this. And if this continues to go, and obviously this is gonna go somewhere here and then it will go to a larger wave four. So we'll see what happens. So this is a really good uh, reversal setup on long. Same thing happening with this. 
see the difference between the, this chart and this is that this move up has not yet cleared the previous level. So this is actually a sideways market. So for that reason, this is not a good setup one. Otherwise, pattern wise, it's a, it's a good setup one, but the weekly chart is not supporting it. That makes sense. Okay, another interesting one. So a nice setup one on the daily chart, uh, but the weekly chart is really, really bearish even before the pandemic. There's some other stuff going on with this company. What is it? It's energy and minerals, so they have their own problems wherever they are refining and marketing. So price is now hitting purple here. So we have an ABC completed. This stock could actually continue to do a fourth wave down and go further down. So not really interesting. Again, another one like that. Some of these are some of the um, industries that have not recovered. This one has recovered. So this again is a very bearish chart. And in between, it's gone up. So not the best. Uh, that's a rubbish shot. SCP. So that's the kind of uh, chart which has it's having a turnaround. So it's kind of hit the rock bottom here and then it started going sideways and then there was some push from the investors in interest in it. Price goes up, goes sideways and now you have this is like a still a pullback not really a, a clear one but it is a setup one so if one went in you can see the you know there isn't enough distance between the two here horizontally time wise we want the chart to go a little bit sideways but we've seen many times that sometimes that doesn't always happen so it's best to just take an entry because it's a strong move and obviously what it's done is that it's reacted to those levels so um, if you get out somewhere here would be wise if you are long on this these are all turnaround kind of charts you can see all of them turning around very very similar most of them are so this is a, a bearish chart on the weekly and turning around but still hitting levels to the left not really a great investment again similar chart similar chart similar 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 so in in the penny stocks world you would see a lot of them being dead and then the market <laughs> kind of does a CPR on them and they suddenly start breathing again. They come back to life only to die soon. Okay, this is uh, wh why is this chart on my list? Delete it. Thank you. A strong B trap. Okay. Happy tomorrow, Amy. Oh, you're going? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I need to go. Long session anyway. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye now. Right. So I haven't found anything. I'll go to the 20 plus watch list. Let's see. Okay, this is interesting. I'll check it again. This one is gone now, so I will delete it. This one is not interesting. I will delete that as well. Okay, this was this is supposed to be an entry here. Now it's gone, so we'll delete it. If it gets ready, it will hit the scanner again. That's a bad chart. PEG, not interesting. PFSI, this is gone as well. PLL, 
Okay, this is the one that actually broke out like this crazy, came down. Not really exciting, but I'll keep it for a while. Okay, so this one, entry should have been made at 53. I haven't made it. Keep it for a bit, just to see where it goes. Uh, not exciting, but I'll keep it for a bit. This is, this is ready for entry. This should be, um, I'm gonna make a note of this and see if I can take it on my IG account. Okay, the note means give it that color. Was it orange one? No. Okay, hold on. Sell trades, buy trades. Okay, yeah, the orange one. Not the gappers. Okay, let's just change, rename that. Go back to that list. Oh, look at that. Run is running. Sun run. So initially, the entry should have been here. And if you stayed in it, you would add on here. If you got out, you get back in here or here. And now it would have paid off. Sale. Oh, this is, um, we actually had our entry here and we got out there. So this should be marked as purple. Purple means the one that we have traded and got out of. So this one is not interesting, interesting anymore. This is a beautiful, beautiful setup. Um, I did not take it because I wasn't sure about the weekly chart over here, uh, but turns out it was a beautiful setup. So move it there. This is interesting. I'll check it for the details. We can delete this one now. SSTK, not looking good. Delete that one. STAA, not looking good. Delete that. TRI, 345 is done on the weekly chart. Um, another fake out has happened. Let's get rid of that. TUP already traded around here. First pullback, second pullback, third pullback, fourth pullback. Hitting the previous four. Okay. Not a good setup one. Forget that. Urban Outfitters. There's a fake out on this. And the weekly chart is not pretty. Get rid of that as well. VCRA. We traded this one over here. And we traded it over here. So... It can go to the purple list. Remove it from here. Remove it from here. Remove it from here. This can be removed. Okay, Yelp. Keep looking at it. Yelp, change it to orange. So it's YME. This is 345 on the weekly chart. Now it's gone. 10 BRKL. Okay. Should have been taken here, but the weekly chart wasn't ready. I'll get rid of it. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this either. This is interesting. I don't like it. Sideways. Again, levels to the left.
Nope. Interesting, but gone. Leave it there for a bit. Interesting, but gone. Should have taken on 6th of January. Ooh, this one is a miss. Another miss. Take that off. Space. Keep it just for the sake of it. Um, this looks pretty rubbish. Okay, this is bearish on the weekly and set up one here, but it's already broken here. Not exciting. We want nice clean setups. Go, go. Go, go. Did not go anywhere. Wi Fi. Okay. This one broke out nicely. ESNT. We'll wait for a pullback setup on that. This one can still be traded. TFF Pharmaceuticals. Let's do orange. So the orange ones are the ones that I'm going to consider um, around US session to see if I can still get into those. Quite a lot of stocks that I have on my list. Get rid of this one. Okay. See, this is what I'm talking about. A really strong gap, and then I can't trade it. So get rid of that. TFC should have been traded here, December or start of January. Now it's gone. Trip. Really strong breakout on a PC here. Was waiting for a setup one on this, but didn't. Didn't set up. This one had a breakout here, a B trap setting up again, but not really exciting. Okay. So, quite a lot of uh, triggers that have happened in the last week. This is one of them as well. I will look for a pullback entry on this. Let's get rid of this one. AD Alliance data. Okay, so this is a bearish stock. We'll keep an eye on it. An entry can be made on this one. BLL. Keep watching that. This one's very, very sideways. Forget that. CLGX, nice strong uptrend. This would have been a nice trade here. This is going to go to a larger degree wave 4 now, I think. CVS, F pharmacies. So it's hit the sideways market here. Let's stay away from this for now. This could be looked at. This has broken, this has gone, but the weekly chart is not pretty. Mm, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at this one. That should be deleted. OMC, okay, RHI, yep, STT. On SYY. Okay, this was an entry here. Not really smooth chart. This has come back, kind of failed at the highs. Forget this one. WH highs again. DAL. What just happened? Let's see WH PRU 
RTX. Hit those levels to the left. That's still a setup. I'll keep an eye on this. Brooks. This looks good as well. Keep it on the list. Keep this on the list as well. Can be taken. Technology services. DCP can be taken. NCLH. Okay. Upwork continue to go up. This one is at the all time highs. Can be taken. China Biologic, huh? VVNT. Okay, interesting. WF SLG MIDD. When did I add this many charts to this list? This should have been an entry here, but it's at a resistance level. We'll keep it. Keep this one as well. And this one. So I'm making a short list out of a short list. The pins, the pins have started going up again. I'm not interested now. ADP, huh? This was supposed to be a good trade, but no. APP, CMCSA, DISH, get rid of this one, DAL, still interesting, General Motors, not a bad trade, Google is still interesting, yeah, it's a setup one, GPS is setup one, SPG TXC and that's it so now I'm gonna go through my orange list and see if I can find one or two stocks that I want to send pending orders or actually open orders later on today this is probably one of them probably one that I would trade the idea would be to go long here at 62 probably and then target 64 and stop loss would be 60 well, that's not very good is it so 61.90 probably 61.80 and then go for 64 64.50 and actually target 70 to see what happens get that will be one it's a bit iffy get that if it's iffy this one is gone and there's a pullback entry available but okay hmm I could time something on the hourly chart on this but the entry is certainly not available for me today one hour chart I'll see there's still a couple of hours left I could still make an entry on this one but the stop loss is going to be here no let's not do that why did I even add this to the orange get rid of it RTX 
sideways get rid of it this is interesting technology service data processing it's trending strong yeah definitely putting an order here for this one so I could trade this as well and I could trade this as well this is interesting as well there's a strong move here we'll see if we can take it from 63 and I can go long on this at the open so there you go these are a few of the stocks that I will consider later on today um, let's quickly go again so one would be REPL SO let's just change this one REPL SO TFFP no MET let's just remove that as well not interested anymore not interested anymore maybe yes 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 not interested yes yes mm, yes and that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten stocks I will still only choose two or three from this later at the New York session. And that's my stock analysis.